Well, Kenya's cooperative societies are planning to organize international organizations such as the World Bank to be able to meet with individual cooperative societies and create an avenue for bulk lending to this sector. Joining us now to discuss plans to push cooperative societies as alternative sources of credit for members is Joseph Kibe. He's managing partner at Alpex Consulting. A very warm welcome to you, Joseph. We'd like to jump right into it and just first start talking with what your members would like to come out of this summit that you are planning to host in August. Yeah, thank you very much. I think I need to give you some background about uh, the cooperative sector movement in Kenya. Uh, in Kenya, we have about uh, 13,000 registered cooperatives. Of uh, the 13,000, we have uh, 6,000 uh, circles, and then we have uh, 7,000 cooperative societies. Uh, the entire cooperative sector movement has a, a capitalization of about uh, 3.2 billion US dollars. And uh, we have uh, uh, about uh, 240 billion Kenyan shillings, uh, something close to uh, 2.6 US uh, dollars, uh, million US dollars uh, in terms of uh, deposits. We're also looking at uh, uh, about uh, 12 million Kenyans being part of the cooperative uh, movement, where we usually say that we have about, uh, in every household, at least one person is in the cooperative sector movement. Uh, what is happening is that uh, you need to, to note that Kenya has done better than any other country in Africa uh, as far as cooperative sector movement is concerned. Uh, we are actually ranked by the International Cooperative Alliance as the best uh, in Africa uh, because our cooperatives uh, contribute about 45% of the GDP. Uh, we also know that uh, about that 1% of the national gross savings uh, is also coming from this sector. Joseph, I want to uh, ask what is Joseph, is that Joseph, what I'd like to ask you is the cooperatives, I know in South Africa there is there is something where people get together and they put money into almost like it's a, it's a savings account that, that, that these cooperatives would hold. Is it the same in Kenya, just in terms of people getting together on an informal basis and saving in that manner? Yeah, that is what uh, has been happening in Kenya. In fact, uh, if you looked at the entire economy of Kenya, uh, we have uh, had cooperative sector uh, running uh, most of the enterprises in Kenya. You realize that uh, in a particular sector, maybe uh, we can take, for example, the coffee sector, we have uh, at least uh, 2,000 members who've come for one particular reason to have their commodity marketed through the cooperative sector. If you walked into the uh, professional sector, you realize that uh, people like in the police circle, uh, they have come together for a reason to bring together uh, savings so that they can uh, better all create wealth for each other. Joseph, so which- So I, I would want to imagine that- Which, which income sorry? bracket, which income bracket are we talking? What, what income bracket are we talking about that make up these cooperatives? Uh, this is across the entire divide because you realize that uh, when you're talking about uh, farmers, you're talking about my mother and my father in the village who could be in the age bracket of about uh, maybe uh, 50 to 70. Uh, when you walk into the urban center, like in Nairobi, there are so many cooperatives that are also being run by uh, young, young people. But I realize that uh, the so-called generation Y may not be in any cooperative sector. And this is what you're trying to uh, tell the economy, that uh, we need to start where our parents started. So Joseph, for my understanding of, of what the issue is right now, and one of the reasons that we called you on the program, is that you want to, or your organization is working with these cooperatives, that you would have sort of like a, a, a formal lending, lending branch and getting international financiers in. You know, could you please just talk to, to that particular issue? Uh, what is happening is that uh, the cooperative sector has had a couple of issues. One, we have uh, the macroeconomic uh, environment where we've had a problem with uh, the interest rates. Today, if you walked into a bank uh, in Kenya, you'll pay or you'll be given a loan at the interest rate uh, between 20 and uh, 25%. Uh, the other thing that you're looking at, uh, at is about uh, the inflation rate. Today, our inflation rate is about 16%. This actually affects uh, the disposable income for these people. Uh, you're also looking at um, uh, the way the forex, uh, the, 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 the unstable forex rate that has been uh, rocking our country. So basically that is one problem. The other thing that we are trying to say is that there has been a deficit. This uh, sector requires about 280 billion uh, Kenyan shillings in terms of uh, loans. 
but uh, what the banks are able to supply is about 120 billion uh, Kenyan shillings. That means it's a deficit of about uh, 170 uh, billion Kenyan uh, shillings, uh, close to about maybe uh, 1.9 or 2 billion uh, US dollars. So this is what we're trying to look for. We're looking for the 2 billion US dollars in terms of financing, which the local market cannot be able to uh, give. So, so speak to us about the structure of how it would work. How are you wanting to set this up? Because my understanding is that you are going to have a summit in August. You're going to be talking about certain issues that, that face this particular sector. And so far, the reports that we are receiving is that the summit has attracted 15 international financiers. What are you saying to them in terms of how this is going to be structured and how they can meet this need? Uh, what is going to happen? We have invited delegates across the entire cooperative sector. We anticipate to have about 2,000 delegates who are going to be CEOs and the chairman uh, of cooperatives in Kenya and uh, the region. What is going to happen is that uh, the international financiers uh, would have to take this as a serious uh, engagement because uh, we are going to bring uh, the cooperatives into one platform where they will come and uh, the international financiers, the 15 that you're talking about, will come in and showcase what they have. I, I know the local banks will be interested as well, but what we're trying to say is that uh, now that they have had the one 20 billion Kenyan shillings uh, worth of uh, loans to the circles, then they must let the international financiers take uh, into uh, the balance, which is about uh, 2 billion US dollars. But Joseph so this is going to be that. The also, what, what I'd yeah. like to find out, are you going to operate differently from the way the banks operate? Because you were talking about high interest rates with the banks. If, if this were to happen and you were able to build the structure, how would you operate and how would that be different from the way the banks are operating right now in Kenya? Uh, you realize that outside Kenya, the interest rates are not as high as uh, we have here. You're talking about 25% uh, interest rates here. But when you walk into South Africa or uh, some place in uh, other countries, you realize that you have uh, interest rates as low as uh, uh, 8%. You realize that uh, when I've walked into a circle and I'm borrowing money, in a normal scenario, it should have been not more than 12%. So what is going to happen is that the international financiers will walk in and get into a commercial bank that is existing in Kenya, where they will do what we call bulk lending. And then this uh, local bank is going to be the administrator, where now individual circles are going to walk in and get the little money that they may require. I have one particular case that I could refer to, where one uh, international financier is talking about giving out uh, more than 20 billion US dollars. This would not be to one circle, because you uh, walk down into a circle and realize that they have only uh, maybe financial needs up to uh, maybe three, four uh, million US dollars. So what will happen is that one bank, local bank, will have to be appointed as uh, the, 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 the administrator of uh, this kind of arrangement. Uh, and then they'll walk down to individual circles. Joseph, there's so much I want to ask you, but we do have to wrap it. Thank you so much for joining us. We've run out of time. That was Joseph Kibe. He's managing partner at Alpex Consulting.